This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE3303 solids. Talking about one of the most complicated subjects we cover this semester. It's that of combined stresses or combined loadings. It's really where we bring the whole semester together and the whole subject of solids together. And through the principle of superposition, we can break the... Uh, the loads and the forces and the stresses they cause internally on a member into their six components and analyze those stresses and combine them and figure what the state of stress at any particular point is within a member. So this is also where we bring statics and solids together. Uh, we use statics to solve for the reactions and then solids we interpret or convert those forces from reactions from, so from statics into solids uh, and the terminology changes a little bit and the sign, change, sign convention changes some. So, I want to show an example of this blue solid rod, it's bent attached to the wall over here at point A I mean that the wall to the left of point A and then point A is where we want to analyze the stresses so we have one force acting on this bent uh, rod that's in the XY plane and it's this force in red down here and the force is in Cartesian form, 3i, positive 2j, and negative 6k kips. And the bar is bent 25 inches in the y direction, then it bends to the, it goes to the x direction 30 inches, and that's where the force is applied. All that's measured from point A. So first we have a statics problem, and we have a three-dimensional rigid body equilibrium problem. And so we need to draw a free body diagram. And we need to remember that in statics, we have basically at any point three straight line forces and three moments. So we would show, we cut a section there at point A and remember, we're looking at the back side of that solid rod, the blue solid rod. And so on the back side of that, we would have these reactions and we would assume them in the positive direction. We'd have AX shown in red, positive in the positive X direction, AY in the positive Y direction, and AZ. Those three forces are shown in red. And then in green, I have the three moments that you can have. And I have to use the right-hand rule to determine the direction of rotation of those moments. But once again, remembering I'm on the back side of that section cut at the end of, rod, of the rod at point A. And I have in green, I assume a positive moment vector for the reaction. And using the right-hand rule, I show the direction of rotation. For instance, for MAX over here, I've got a rotation due to the right-hand rule like that. Okay, so that's statics. And to solve for those reactions, I have three, three equations for force. Force X, Y, and Z equals zero. And the sum of moments in the, about the x, y, and z axis at point A is zero. So first I have this calculation here, statics reactions. I only have two forces. I have the applied force of 3, 2, negative 6. And then I have the reactions at A, AX, AY, AZ. We just talked about how they're assumed. All those are I, J, K. And so each column is the sum of the forces in the three directions. Therefore, I'm able to say that on the back side of that section, I have these reactions. AX is negative 3, 
A Y is negative two kips, A Z is positive six kips. The moment's a little bit more complicated. I just need a cross product. I'm going to sum moments about point A, and that's going to be a cross product. There's two things that cause moment about point A. The force, the three, two, six force, and the three moments at point A, which are really just one moment. It's a vector, a Cartesian vector. And so the moment that the force F creates about point A is this cross product right here. And it's R cross F, which gives me a 3 by 3 determinant, unit on the top, position in the middle, and force on the bottom. So remember that position vector looks like this from the point I'm taking moments about to the force and so we would call that R maybe F over A to indicate its tip and its tail anyway so it's it's a uh, coordinates in Cartesian are just tip minus tail I'm saying A is zero 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 therefore F point F is at 30, 25, 0, which is really the components of the Cartesian vector 30 and 25 and 0. I put that in the determinant and then the force goes on the bottom, the 3, 2 and negative 6 here on the bottom. I do the math of the determinant and I come up with the moment about F created by that force is negative 150i, positive 180j and negative 15k. All those are kip inches. Then I can solve for my moments just by doing those same things with the columns. Each column is the moment about the x, y, and z axis. And I can get the reactions on the back side of that section of max is 150, may is negative 180, and maz is 15. Okay, so that's the really the, the statics of it and solving for those internal forces. Now I need to convert from statics to solids. So, looking at this free body diagram, or the end of the free body diagram there near A, shown here are all my statics reactions. Now I need to convert those. The three forces become one axial force and two shear forces. And the three moments become one torsion and two bending. Okay, so now I have a little bit of a sign convention conflict. I need to resolve that. So let me show these axial forces on the positive direction for solids. Starting with the red, the axial force, positive axial is acting away from the section. That's tension. So that would be N. Positive shear, I'm just going to ignore the sign convention or just take the same sign convention I get from statics. So I'm going to say I have a Z force shear, so I'm going to say that's positive. VZ. VX, excuse me. And this is going to be positive VZ up. Then I've got three bending moments. One of them is a torsion, two of them are bending. So for this orientation, where Y is to the left, to the right, excuse me, Z is up, X is coming out of the page at me. Then for torsion, I need to use that sign convention of the right hand rule where I put my heel of my hand, point my thumb away from the section and I get this is a positive torsion which acting on the back side it's pointing away my fingers curl in the direction of rotation so that's positive torque for bending moment we're really thinking about what where I have compression and where I have tension so I'm just gonna say this is positive moment and look at where I have tension and compression on the back side that's MZ 
mz is causing rotation by the right hand rule like this. So let's go around the back side. And so we'll talk about it here in a minute. But that's creating tension on the right side of the back side of the section. Compression on the left side of the back side. It's very complicated. You've got to think about it though. M X is mo moment rotation about the X axis by the cr right hand rule. It's pulling away from the top and pointing at the bottom so I have tension on the top and compression on the bottom due to positive moment. Okay, so if that's not complicated enough, then I need to start analyzing the stresses caused by those things. Okay, so my statics reactions were the straight line reactions were negative 3, negative 2 kips, and positive 6 kips. And those were once again acting on the back side of that section, that blue section at point A. My moments were also from that determinant and the sum of moments 150 positive kip inches negative 180 and positive 15 all these are kip inches now on this little chart here I've built I want to convert those forces into what, the, what I call them in solids so AX is VX AY, which the statics reaction is negative to because it's pointing away uh, in the negative Y direction, becomes positive, um, positive axial force in. So I have positive two kips there. Tension. VZ is once again in the whatever direction it is, I assume the same direction as I did for statics, six kips. It's acting on the back side of the uh, section though, I need to think about that. And then my moment about the x axis is that 150 kip inches. The torsion is 180. And it's going to have the opposite sign convention of MAY and MAZ. We'll talk about what direction where I have compression and tension there due to that 15 kip inches. Okay, so let's look at the stresses that these forces produce. Okay, shear VX is going to produce shear stress, and that's going to be VQ over IT. Okay, Vx is going to be negative 3, so that means it's going to be pointing towards the, uh, I'm on the back side of the section, so that's going to be pointing, my reaction of negative 3 is going to be this direction. That's the reaction on the back side. Anyway, so that's going to produce that's going to have, this is my neutral axis, and because it, the shear is perpendicular to the neutral axis, and that's going to give me the, uh, for torsion, I'm going to have the maximum shear stress at the neutral axis. And I'm going to have zero shear stress here at the furthest point from the neutral axis. Okay, the normal force, this two kips, is just going to be, we said it's tension, and it's going to be uniform, it's going to be acting this way, away, it's in the y direction, and it's just going to be uniform sigma p over a, normal stress. 
and it's going to be uniform over the entire cross section. That's the easiest one of them all. VZ is going to also produce VQ over IT shear stress. Except in this case, VZ being up on the back side of the section is going to produce the maximum torsion stress. I mean shear stress here at this neutral axis, the x-axis. And I'm going to have a zero shear stress here on the top and the bottom. Okay, now let's look at the bending. Mx is going to produce sigma normal bending stress, my over i. So I'm going to have sigma is my over i. For this case, in this case it's going to be a bending about the x-axis. And if I look at the direction of moment, I've got back over here mx on the back side of the section by the right hand rule is compressing the bottom and tension on the, on the top. So I'm going to have due to mx and the bending moment like that, I'm going to have negative compression or compression due to mx on the bottom and I'm going to have positive bending stress sigma x on the top. I'm going to have zero bending stress on the neutral axis. On t due to torsion, the torsion direction is going to be, as I said over here, this green arrow by the right hand rule on the back side of the section. So if I look at the section over here, I'm going to have rotation on the back side. Like this. Therefore, I'm going to have rotation like that, which is going to give me shear stress in this direction on the top, down over here on the right side, to the left on the bottom, and up. It's a rotational shear stress in the circumferential direction due to torsion. And I've got, of course, this is tau is T rho over J, torsion shear stress. And then finally, due to the moment about the Z axis, I've got a reaction that was positive 15, and it was positive moment, so it's going to be on the back side of the section again. That kind of rotation, where it's going like that, and that arrow is pointing at the left side so I'm going to have negative sigma z max over here positive sigma z over here and along the neutral axis sigma z is zero and of course this is sigma is m y over i type stresses So, in summary, it's very complicated. You have to break it up into six parts. First, start with the six reactions from statics. Convert those and make sure you're sure on the sign conventions into solids reactions. And look at the stresses that those create. You got one axial, one torsion, two straight line shear, VQ over IT, transverse shears, and two bending moments.